The idea of discovering an ancient animal that was thought to be long dead is something that seems like it would only happen in books or films. However, this is actually a very real phenomenon. Organisms that have had a long gap in their fossil record, and are therefore presumed to be extinct, but then turn out to still be alive, are given the name Lazarus Taxa. The title comes from the story of Lazarus of Bethany in the Bible, who Jesus brought back to life after he had been dead for four days. So what kind of creatures do we know of that are Lazarus Taxa? Here are three animals that came back from the dead. The first animal on this list to have come back from the dead is a small canid from South America. The story of the discovery and later rediscovery of the bush dog is a fairly amusing one. But first of all, what exactly is a bush dog? As I mentioned, they are canids, part of the same group of animals as dogs and wolves. However, it has been said that they look more like mustelids, which is the group that includes weasels and badgers. Bush dogs have an extensive range that stretches from Panama to South Brazil, inhabiting countries such as Paraguay, Peru and Ecuador among others, although they are quite rare throughout their habitats, making them a near-threatened species. Although they live in forested environments, these unique creatures are also exceptional swimmers, being semi-aquatic and possessing webbed feet suggestive of their diving habits. Bush dogs are not particularly large, reaching between 57 and 75 centimetres in length, and about 30 centimetres in height. They have quite short legs, as well as short ears and snout, and a bushy tail. They usually hunt together in small packs, taking down animals such as agoutis, capybaras and rheas. Although capybaras and rheas are far bigger than bush dogs, they are able to dispatch them by cooperating with each other as a group. There has even been a case of a pack of about six bush dogs taking down a large tapir, which goes to show their effectiveness as predators. So then, how did this strange animal come back from the dead? Well, in the year 1839, a Danish naturalist called Peter Wilhelm Lund described the fossilised remains of a bush dog, naming the creature Spiothos, meaning cave wolf. The reason for this name was due to where the first fossils were found, even though the actual animal does not inhabit caves. And so, for many years, it was thought that this creature was an extinct species that died out long ago. However, in 1843, the same guy, Peter Wilhelm Lund, described the living form of the animal, but he didn't realise that this was the very same animal he had named the fossils of just four years earlier. Calling the living form Ictichion, this name was used for the bush dog until sometime in the 20th century, when it was realised that the fossils and the living animal were the same thing. Peter Wilhelm Lund died in 1880, and so he never found out that the two species he had named were the same animal. This makes the bush dog a Lazarus taxon. Spiothos was long thought to be a dead species, but as it turns out, it's still alive, effectively meaning that the creature came back from the dead. At least, taxonomically it did. This fish is the most well-known of all Lazarus taxa, famously being called a living fossil after its rediscovery back in 1938. Coelacanths are a group of fish that are actually quite closely related to us, as they are not ray-finned fish like the majority of fish species today are. Instead, they are lobe-finned fish, which is the same group that us tetrapods evolved from. Coelacanths are actually quite large animals, being capable of reaching lengths of up to 2 metres. These fish possess a type of scale known as cosmoid scales. These structures are very thick and tough, acting as armour to protect the animals from damage. Coelacanths also have a lot of fins on their bodies, enabling them to be fairly manoeuvrable when moving through their watery habitats, as they can point themselves in any direction with ease. Coelacanths first evolved about 400 million years ago, and were thought to have survived until near the end of the Cretaceous period, going extinct at about the same time that the non-avian dinosaurs died out. This is still an impressive amount of time for a group to survive for, but it was therefore believed that these fish had been extinct for millions of years, since they just disappeared from the fossil record after the end of the Cretaceous. So you can imagine the excitement in the scientific community when a living coelacanth was caught by a fisherman in 1938. This was completely unexpected. An animal that had supposedly been dead for 66 million years was suddenly swimming about off the coast of South Africa. In the years since its initial rediscovery, coelacanths have been found all around the West Indian Ocean, off the coast of Tanzania, Kenya, Madagascar and in the Comoros. And in 1998, it was announced that a second species of coelacanth had been discovered in Indonesia, revealing that coelacanths are actually fairly widespread. The coelacanth has often been called a living fossil, a term that describes an animal alive today that has hardly changed over millions of years, since it was already well adapted for what it did back then. However, this term is a very misleading one, especially in the case of the coelacanth. 
Living fossil often encourages the perception that a particular taxon has undergone no change in the millions of years it has been around for, which is not true. Living fossils have evolved over time, just not very much, as they are in a period of evolutionary stasis. They still undergo molecular evolution, but their overall morphology might not change a lot. Prehistoric coelacanths actually do look very different to the modern taxa, but they have remained similar enough to be recognisable over time, and so they can still be classified as a living fossil. So there's another animal that came back from the dead, surprising scientists all over the world with its long absence from the fossil record. But, after all that time away, it turns out that coelacanths have always been here with us. The false killer whale is one of the largest dolphins in the world, along with the orca and pilot whale, and although its name might suggest some relation, the false killer whale is not closely related to the killer whale. The two animals do look somewhat similar, sharing certain characteristics, but they are classified in different dolphin groups. This animal is also another example of a Lazarus taxon, as it was once believed to be extinct. False killer whales can grow to be very big animals, reaching lengths of around 5 metres, so you might be wondering how such a large-bodied creature was thought to be extinct for so long. Well, as we saw with the coelacanths, the ocean is good at keeping secrets. The false killer whale first came to our knowledge through its fossilised remains. Bones from the creature were discovered in 1843 in Lincolnshire, England, and were described in 1846 by the famous naturalist Sir Richard Owen in his book A History of British Fossil Mammals and Birds. Owen immediately noticed the resemblance to killer whales, as well as the long-finned pilot whale, naming this newly discovered animal Phocina crassidens. At this time in history, both the killer whale and long-finned pilot whale were also classified under the genus Phocina. And so, for 15 years, it was thought that Owen's dolphin was a long extinct species. But then, remarkably, in 1861, a large pod of false killer whales was spotted off the coast of Germany and described by a Danish zoologist. One of the members of the pod was actually captured, and the next year a few false killer whales were found beached on the Danish coast, providing undeniable evidence of the survival of this species. However, they might not survive for much longer. Although there is not enough data to determine their conservation status as a species, individual populations, such as the Hawaiian population, are sadly endangered. Studies over the last 20 years have illustrated a decline in the number of sightings of this animal, as well as the size of the pods that are sighted. This decline has most likely been caused by the reduction of their prey, the pollution of their habitats from plastics and chemicals, as well as these animals being caught as bycatch, which causes them to become entangled in fishing nets and drown. The threats the false killer whale faces, coupled with their very slow rate of reproduction, makes them a very vulnerable species. Despite their name, false killer whales are actually very friendly towards humans in the wild, with reports of these animals offering their fish to people. A lone individual in waters around British Columbia and Washington would repeatedly catch tuna, before offering their catch to humans in boats, and members of the Hawaiian population have been known to give fish to divers. False killer whales are also kept in captivity in some aquariums, as you can see from the footage you're seeing now. These videos are from my visit to Vancouver Aquarium, and although it's always sad to see cetaceans in captivity, this individual is a rescued false killer whale, and likely would have died if it had been left in the wild. So there's yet another animal that has risen from the dead, the secret of its survival being hidden from us by the ocean once again. If there's one thing you've learned from this video, I hope it's an understanding of how lucky we are to have been given another chance to see these incredible animals in the flesh, after thinking they were dead for so long. And since we've been given this chance, I really hope we do not waste it by making these creatures extinct anyway. Finding out that an animal has survived far longer than we expected, only for us to kill it off, would be a truly tragic ending to such remarkable creatures. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world and the wonderful life we share it with, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.